Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. And thank you all for your testimony and for your service. The internet should be free from discrimination against users and preserve choice and opportunity of communication for everyone. That's my basic belief. In my hometown of Seattle, uh, believe it or not, my constituents still experience the consequences of a lack of competition among internet providers. Even though we have six broadband providers, their coverage areas don't overlap and result in slower speeds and higher prices for my constituents. So the consequences of media consolidation loom large, and increasingly with entities which create content, also disturbing content, I worry that full promise of greater choices and lower cost to consumers stands to be re reversed. Can it be clearly said that companies that create and distribute content have a vested interest in ensuring that their consumers have access to their products first. We need to dig deeper into the realities of a world where as of a few years ago, just 2011, 90% of the American media was controlled by just half a dozen companies. Compare that to 1983, when 90% was owned by 50 companies. And nationwide, 62 million Americans in urban areas and 16 million in rural areas cannot access fast internet. And it's a serious issue given how much the internet is ingrained into our lives. More and more, you can't apply for a job unless you have access to the internet. You can't pay bills or even check your kids' grades, as I found out when, my, when everything went online in terms of checking what was going on with my son. So it's clear that there's much work to be done, especially in light of ongoing efforts to um, undermine net neutrality. And so while I'm pleased that we're hearing a, uh, holding a hearing on this critical issue, I'm simply not convinced yet that antitrust enforcement alone is, not sufficient, is sufficient to protect consumers. Um, and particularly on non-economic issues like free speech, on throttling, blocking, or prioritizing content, and of questions that Ms. McSweeney, you raised in your testimony or your answers around prevention versus remedy. Um, so in the process that led up to the 2015 internet order, and again this year, there was tremendous um, input from consumers to the FCC, civil rights groups, musicians, independent filmmakers, arts organizations, um, and many expressed concerns about free expression and viewpoint diversity. And yesterday, in the New York Times, comedian Kamal Bell wrote about the impact of net neutrality on artists, and I'll just quote him. He says, this fair internet where everyone from an amateur comedian to a celebrity to a huge media company plays by the same rules means you don't need a lot of money or the backing of someone with power to share your content with the world. Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent to enter this op-ed into the record. No objection. Thank you. Ms. McSweeney, since um, the FTC typically views such concerns as outside of its jurisdiction, how would antitrust law have to be expanded and modified to address those concerns? Well, I, I think one of the questions that I would, I would ask about, about whether we wanted to expand antitrust law to reach non-economic concerns would be um, whether we really want to take a set of tools that is designed to protect competition and consumers in the marketplace and expand it outward, especially when we have an expert regulator, the Federal Communications Commission, that already has expertise and a public interest mandate on this beat. So I would argue that we can get the job done uh, by using the tools the Federal Communication Commission has and by perhaps expanding and complementing the, the FCC's jurisdiction with the FTC as a backup, um, but not uh, I don't think it's necessary for this to be an either or or premise. So yes, there are ways we could expand antitrust law that I think in my view would be very helpful in promoting competition, um, not just uh, protecting net neutrality, but promoting competition generally in the marketplace and, and online as well. Um, and it would be helpful maybe in protecting consumers, but, but we already have an expert agency with an extensive record that has uh, proceeded in uh, putting in place very clear rules to protect the open internet. And Mr. Romano, um, in your testimony, in your written testimony, you seem to indicate that you do believe that there is some role for both the FTC and the FCC in regulation. And in fact, if I, if I read this correctly, you, you, um, you talk about, you, you seem to be more concerned about who is being regulated rather than the regulation itself. So you're asking for regulation around access of network providers. Um, you're saying don't just put it all on the ISPs, put it on the network providers for accessibility. But can you clarify, I mean, do you support complete repeal 
of the 2015 open internet order? It's hard to say with respect to a 300-page order that there's nothing in there that we like. However, what I would say is that the rules that were adopted in 2015 and where companies that have operated under Title II for years were perhaps the most heavily regulated as local telephone companies historically, although today, of course, they're broadband providers primarily. Um, the issue we, I think we have with the 2015 order is more that it took Title II and it didn't just take Title II in a way that we were used to, it rewrote some of the rules and frameworks in a way that no one was used to. So for example, in the privacy space, the CPNI rules that were under the FCC's two, Section 222 um, mandate in the Communications Act, we were used to operating under those as telephone companies with respect to telecommunications information. The way in which those were rewritten to gather all sorts of information that not only telephone companies or broadband providers have, but also sweep in stuff that other people have, we just didn't see that as being sort of a logical outgrowth of what Title II had been. So but to be clear, repealing the order completely would potentially have tremendous disastrous conf uh, consequences for rural areas. And I think the point that Ms. McSweeney was making about competition, it's difficult sometimes to get competition to operate in rural areas and places where there aren't as many consumers, where there isn't as much money to be made. And so um, I yield back, uh, Mr. Chairman, but just wanted to say that I think there's a lot more nuance to this than simply repealing an order that would produce, than saying we, we should repeal the order and it would produce benefits. I think there's great harm to be done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.